How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be going over how we can find addresses in MapKit and this works for any location you can think of. So if we type in something such as Paris and click on find address it's going to take us to Paris otherwise we can type in something such as Milano and it will take us over there and you can even write an address that is much much more specific such as Ama Pro Gada. 110 which is a local address here in Copenhagen and it's going to take you there directly and this functionality is not included in MapKit so we're going to be using an API for this but it's wonderful and it's very easy to use and works very fast. So let's get started immediately by creating a new project in Xcode and the very first thing we have to do is go ahead and edit the plist settings. So go to info and down here just go ahead and click on the plus sign and we need to configure the app transport security settings and click on enter. Then go ahead and open this and inside it go ahead and click the plus once again and click on allow arbitrary loads. So go ahead and click on that and click on enter. And we need to change this to yes. And just to explain what this does briefly is when you try to load an API and it has HTTPS, it everything works perfectly. But when you have only HTTP, it's not as secure as it should be. And Xcode by default or your iPhone by default does not allow you to do that. So you have to go ahead and activate it inside here so that we can make HTTP requests. And usually you shouldn't have to do that. It's just because we're using a free API that this is required. But that's the only prior setup you need for this application. And next we can go ahead and right click on address finder and click on new file. And inside here, just go ahead and create a new Swift file. Click on next. And we're going to call this one map model and click on create. Now this whole file is going to be used for managing the API request and structuring the data model so that all we have to do in our content view is click on a button that says find address and it's going to return to us the coordinates which we can just push into the map kit. So the first thing we should do inside here is import map kit. And the first thing we have to do inside here is create a data model for our API, which by the way is called position stack. And this is completely free if you want to get some addresses and some coordinates. As you can see right here, you can get a free API key. All you have to do is sign up and it will give it to you immediately. If you go to the API documentation, you'll also get a taste of what is going to be returned. And there's a lot of good stuff in there, such as the data and the results will give you the latitude, the longitude, and a bunch of data that you can use for your map application. So I definitely recommend using this API, but of course you can find another one if you want. The concept is going to remain the same. But anyway, for this particular API, we need to go ahead and create a struct of address, which is going to conform to codable, codable. And inside here, it's only going to have one, which is the data. So let data be an array of datum. And then we can go ahead and type in struct datum, which will conform to codable as well. And we need to let the latitude and the longitude both be a double. And we can also retrieve the name, which will be of type optional string. So we're just going to retrieve these ones. Otherwise, of course, you can choose to include the rest of these if those interest you but we're just interested in the latitude, the longitude, and the name. And while we're inside here, we're going to go ahead and create a struct for the location so that we can put some pin markers on the location that we select instead of just showing an empty map. And each one is going to be identifiable in case we have several. So go ahead and put that in there. Let the ID equal a unique UUID, and then let the name be of type string. And finally, let the coordinates be of type CLL location coordinate 2D. So that takes care of the basic structure of everything we need to make this API work. Now we need to actually just make the request and return the data. So right below all of this, we'll go ahead and create a class called map API, which conforms to observable object so we can locate that data later and update it in our UI. Now let's go ahead and create a private let base 
URL equal, and it's going to be HTTP colon double slash API dot position stack dot com version one slash forward. And then go ahead and create a API key. So API key is going to equal the API key that you got from signing up for the API. And I'm just going to paste in the one I had from earlier. And you're more than welcome to try using this one. Although if a lot of you use it, it might not function correctly. So definitely sign up for your own. But inside here, we need to create three published variables. So the first one's going to be a region, which is a mapkit coordinate region. And this will be inserted into the mapkit API. Then we need to go ahead and create an at published var coordinates, which are the coordinates we'll get back. And we need also to insert at published var locations, which is going to be an array of locations for the pins or for whatever marker you want on the map. And that's going to equal an empty array. And this should actually be set to location. Now the map API is not going to be happy until we initialize it. So go ahead and create a custom initializer. And the first thing we have to do is set a region to the region. So go ahead and call self.region and that's going to equal a mapkit coordinate region. And the center and the span are the things that we have to set. So first we have to add a CLL location coordinate 2D, and this requires a latitude and a longitude. So here we're going to start off with, let's say 51 for testing purposes, 0 0.50, and we want to insert a longitude, which is going to be minus zero, dot one two seven five and you're more than free to enter any coordinates you want you can search on google for the coordinates of your home address or whatever and this is just going to show as soon as the user logs into the application and for the span we need to go ahead and create an mk coordinate span and this is how zoomed in you want it to be and you're going to have to play around with this i just came to the conclusion for my example that five and five was good if you make the number much smaller, such as 0.2, it's going to zoom in a lot more. So let's go ahead and just leave that at five for now. And finally, let's go ahead and add some locations. So go ahead and type in self.locations and insert. And we want to insert a location, which takes a name and a coordinate. So the name is just going to be called pin and the coordinate is going to be a CLL location at coordinate 2D. And you can just copy the one from earlier. This is also going to be the first pin you see in the program. So we just put it in there and at the position of zero. And we can go ahead and close the sidebar to make some more space. And finally, we can get started with creating the function that gets the location. So here we type in function get location, which is going to take an address of any address you want with a string and a delta of type double and the delta is just going to be inserted inside here so we can change the zoom later and inside here we need to go ahead and let p address which will be a temporary address equal address dot replacing occurrences of and we want to replace all of the spaces with percent 20 and this just makes it compliant with the API so that when you insert something into the header, it's going to replace all the spaces with the percent 20. And that just makes it easier for the API to read the address that we're using. Then we need to go ahead and let the URL string equal. And first we need to get started with the base URL, if I can spell that, with a question mark and an axis underscore key, which will equal backslash API key and the query which is just going to be the backslash p address. So this is the URL that we'll be using to make the request. It has the base URL, which is the API, our API key, which allows us to make a request and the address we want to find the coordinates for. Now we just go ahead and make a normal request with guard let URL equals URL. And inside here, we insert the string of URL string. And if this goes wrong, we just print invalid URL and return. So no harm done yet. And don't forget to include the else. But after that, we can go ahead and create a URL session dot shared dot data task with the URL, which is just a URL. 
And inside here, we're going to get back some data, the response, and an error. So you can choose to use whatever you want in and guard let data equal data else return. And we'll also go ahead and print the error, which if something goes wrong, there will be an error dot localized description. And finally, if there is data, we can try to get it. So guard let data, or it's actually called new coordinates equal try. And if this goes wrong, it's going to return nil. So JSON decoder dot decode. And here we need to type in address dot self from the data else it's a simple return statement, which should in theory never happen because it's going to return nil if this does go wrong. But we also need to check if new coordinates dot data is empty, then we're going to print could not find address or the address. And we need to return because what we do next is going to require that this is not empty. So we don't want the program to crash for no reason. So under the if statement, we can go ahead and create a dispatch queue, dispatch queue dot main dot async to make sure it's on the main thread. And we're going to let the details equal the new coordinates dot data at the index of zero. Then we can let the latitude equal details dot latitude and let the longitude equal details dot longitude. And we're going to also let the name equal the details dot name. Now the first part is very simple. All we have to do is type in self dot coordinates is going to equal an array of latitude and longitude. And then we can go ahead and type in self dot region is going to equal an MK coordinate region. So to save time, let's just go back up and copy what we had earlier. So we don't have to create all that placeholder and put it inside here. So for the latitude, of course, enter the latitude and here enter the longitude. And then we have to go to latitude delta, which will be set to the delta and to the delta. Then we have to let the new location equal a location with a name and a coordinate. And the name is going to be set to the name and the coordinate will be a CLL location coordinate 2D with the latitude and longitude set to latitude and longitude. And the program's not happy because name can potentially be nil. So go ahead and just type in pin. Then with that, we can go ahead and type in self dot locations. And we want to remove all of the locations because we only want there to be one pin at a given time. So we're going to remove all of them from the array. And if you don't want to remove all of them from the array, just leave that in but we're going to do that and locations dot insert the new location at the index of zero. And just to put a cherry on this cake, we're going to go ahead and type in print successfully loaded the location. And very, very important, we have to go ahead and resume this task. But with that being done, we can now go to our content view and finish this. So go ahead and open the content view, close the sidebar and and run your preview just to make sure everything's still working. So inside here, we also have to go ahead and import map kit. And it's going to require a state object, private var map API, which is going to equal a map API, which we have to instantiate. And next we have to go ahead and create add state private var text which is going to equal an empty string. And this will be where we can insert our string address. So inside here, we'll create a V stack, followed by a text field that will tell the user to enter an address. And the text will be set to text with a text field style of dot rounded border and a padding of dot horizontal. So, so far we have this search address bar now let's go ahead and add a button and the button will say find address with an action which requires the map API dot get location of the address and the delta. So we're going to insert the text and the delta is going to be set to whatever you want. So here you can set it to 0.5 or anything else. And you should edit this accordingly to whether you are zoomed in on a small address or you're trying to search for a country but you have to make that implementation by yourself. Next, we can go ahead and create a map and it's going to require a coordinate region 
which is going to be the map API dot region. And it's going to require some annotation items, which will come from the map API dot locations. And we need to insert a closure for each location inside here. We want to do the following. And for each location, we're going to create a map marker. And the map marker is going to have the coordinates and a tint. And the coordinate is going to be set to location dot coordinates and the tint will be set to dot blue. And finally, we just want this to ignore the safe area. So it goes all the way to the bottom of our iPhone. And just like that, we can turn any text we enter into a searchable address and find it on the map API. So go ahead and run the program for the first time. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's going to load on London, but you can insert any address you want, such as Milano, as I mentioned earlier, and it's going to search for it. And it's even going to say in the logs that we have successfully loaded the location. So we can actually put this back here and search for something else, such as, let's say, Antalya, find the address, and it will tell us exactly where it is. And of course, you can zoom out and find out that this is located in Turkey. And otherwise, we can type in something such as Sunset Boulevard, which is located in the US. And it's going to try to find it. And as soon as it finds it, it will take us right to Sunset Boulevard. And of course, if you write something that many countries have, such as Sunset Boulevard, there are so many addresses in the States that have this. So if it's not so specific, it's going to return to you an array of addresses. So definitely implement your own functionality there. If we go back to, let's say, our map model, you'll notice that I'm only getting the coordinates for the first option. But if you want to be able to give suggestions, look at what happens when you remove this and print it out. But with that being said, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.